Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Survival Hunter 8.3 guide. My name's Joe Fernandez, and for this guide, I consulted with Fasil, a well-known European multi-rank 1 hunter that is playing Hunter at the highest ratings. To check out more of his gameplay, be sure to check out his stream. This guide will cover essences, Azerite traits, gearing, talents, rotation, and the playstyle of a Survival Hunter in 8.3. Survival Hunters are aggressive specs, so as such you want to run offensive mage essences, which means you'll want two in mind, being Breath of the Dying and the Crucible of Flame. Breath of the Dying will be your staple essence, as it's incredibly powerful if you can use it often, as well as snipe kills against pets to proc the 100% increased damage on it. Using it above 80% will give big pressure and reset the cooldown, or doing it below 20% which can also give you a big chance to land a killing blow. The Crucible of Flame will be a backup against teams where Breath of the Dying won't get as much value with its cooldown reduction. This is mainly a 2's talent against Resta Druids when tunneling them down, as they won't be above 80% HP most of the game, so having Crucible of Flame is a nice alternative. When it comes to your minor essences, these are straightforward and basic, the three you want being Conflict and Strife, Memory of Lucid Dreams, and Condensed Life Force, as for all three minor slots. If you don't have Condensed for now, you could use the Crucible of Flame in its place. As for your Azerite traits, you will ideally have 5 out of 6 mandatory ones to use. These consist of 3 Latent Poison traits, 1 Wilderness Survival, and 1 Primeval Intuition for your maximum damage from Azerite traits. That leaves us with one major trait which can be pretty much whatever you want it to be. Good choices can include Heart of Darkness, Venomous Fangs, or Dire Consequences. Defensive traits in general have been lacklustre due to the nerfs of self-healing ones. However, having one duck in cover is powerful to have for a survival hunter. This is because it has good synergy with survival tactics, making your feign death have a lower cooldown so you can potentially use it more often. As for your stat priority, haste and versatility will be your main stats that you go for. You want to prioritize haste over versa for more pressure, whereas you can opt for versatility over haste to increase your survivability. This choice can be dependent on your playstyle and matchup, if you want more aggression or defense. As for the other stats, you'd prefer mastery over crit, but in a best in slot situation, ideally you'd only have haste and versa all over your gear avoiding mastery and crit as much as possible. As for your trinkets, you want the most offensive ones at your disposal. The current best in slot ones being the Drestagath trinket with the Guidance trinket, both coming from PvE sources. These trinkets deal crazy burst damage instantly, which can help a ton during your offensive setups. Alternative trinkets can include the PvP on use and passive trinkets, as well as the Jar trinket from PvE, as these all have nice stats and a solid amount of extra damage. If you're having trouble surviving against certain setups, such as Mage Lock Healer or Rogue Mage Healer, you could opt to use the Emblem trinket so that you have another defensive cooldown in essence. This could also be paired with your Exhilaration, increasing its healing power and making you live with more ease. As for your corruption, the best two corruptions that have the highest value will be using Gushing Wounds or Versatile. Gushing Wounds gives you the best damage output per corruption, whereas Versatile gives you extra damage and a lot more damage reduction as well, making you much tankier. As a backup choice, you could run with Infinite Stars, giving you high burst damage at a high corruption cost. The normal talent tree will typically look something like this in most arena games, although you have a quite a lot of situational talents, some used more than others. Viper's Venom will be good against teams with heavy crowd control on you, such as Destrolog teams. Natural Mending is nice when you don't need Camouflage. Camouflage will be needed for Rogue Mage or if you play a comp like Thug Cleave, where you need a strong opener in general. Trailblazer can be a niche pick, usually good for chasing healers in twos. This can be great for example, when chasing down a Restor Druid, whilst crowd controlling a Demon Hunter, 
in an attempt to keep to up to them, allowing you to pressure them more easily. As for the choice of Murder of Crows and Bloodseeker, generally Crows is good for offensive setups and Bloodseeker is more PvE efficient for overall damage. Steel Trap can be super niche talent against Jungle Mirrors or Rogue Mage. It's used on healers in jungle, or you can use it against Rogue Mage to crowd control the healer or rogue when training the mage. However, you want to only pick it if you can't afford to take Tracker's net in the PvP talents. Last but not least, Binding Shot can be used against Demon Hunter teams. It's typically used on the demon hunter whilst you trap their healer in order to cover the usage of their reverse magic on them. Survival hunters have a massive arsenal of good PvP talents. The main ones you'll be using most of the time are Roar of Sacrifice, Survival Tactics and Tracker's Net. Roar of Sacrifice is a nice defensive cooldown to deal with heavy damage against the enemy's offensive cooldowns or high pressure. It's an incredibly powerful cooldown especially against combustion. Usually used to trade it blow for blow every time so that you can make combustion less effective. Survival tactics will make your feign death much stronger, allowing you to reduce damage taken by a crazy amount in a small window, which can be used for greater pyros, chaos bolts, or even touch of death windows, rendering them useless if timed well. You could even use it to simply get rid of dots on yourself, being extremely potent against dot classes, obsidian claw trinkets, and maledicts too. Tracker's Net will have multiple uses for defensive or offensive plays throughout the game and can depend on facing classes that struggle to deal with root mechanics in general. Defensively used usually on melee, stopping them from dishing out pressure or using crowd control abilities is a good way to negate their pressure. Diamond Ice is nice against Destro or Demon Hunter comps to prevent their dispels on your freezing traps. That way you can use it on healers without getting trapped reversed or dispelled, or even on the DPS themselves in order to peel their pressure. Dragon Scale Armor is nice against Shadow Play to deny a lot of their dot pressure. You can replace Roar of Sacrifice with this as it doesn't do too much to their pressure and it will usually kill off your pet, making it annoying to use whereas Dragon Scale Armor will be much more effective. Explosive Trap is an option on maps such as Dadder and Sewers or Blade's Edge to knock off healers into a tracker's net downstairs and deny their heals doing so. You can also knock off defensively to peel melee or knock off cooldowns such as Earthen Wall or Barrier. You can even stop casts if you need be, such as Important Crowd Control or Big Chaos Bolts. Mending Bandage will always be great against Rogues and Ferals in 2s or 3s. In 2s specifically, you could take it against Warriors or Death Knights to get rid of Cut of Death bleed effects, making you reduce their pressure of those classes in general. A good example of using Mending Bandage is when bandaging a partner in a kidney shot, getting rid of internal bleeding and all the bleeds plus poisons an Assassination Rogue has. Hunting Pack can be super powerful for your partners. You'd want to use this for your Disc Priest to kite troublesome melee away with ease with a freedom effect as well such as Master's Call. Spider Sting is great against casters that can't dispel it or when you have crowd control on the healer to then silence a caster. You can use it defensively too, for example if a mage is going to land a sheep on your healer, you could spider sping it so that afterwards they are silenced when their polymorph lands. If confident with your ability to use it, you could do big plays such as Priesting and Elemental Shaman's Lightning Lasso, stopping its damage completely. Viper Sting could be taken against Resto Druid teams as it only gets removed if they get a cast off. If you train them down and they can't get a cast off, they will have greatly reduced healing. When dealing pressure passively as a survival hunter, it's important that you dot multiple targets with Serpent Sting, seen as you are playing with latent poison traits, which gives you the most amount of damage. Doing this often, even in twos, will constantly create a lot of pressure, as Serpent Sting will usually be your top damage done in arena games by quite a big margin. As for your burst pressure, this will happen when you pop your coordinated assault. When doing this, you want to make sure you have stacks of latent poisons up before you crowd control the enemy healer. Then, you want to spam mongoose bites during your cooldown in order to do the most damage possible. Bursting in this way with crowd control on the enemy healer will most likely lead to the enemy team using defensive cooldowns or peeling you heavily in order to survive. Outside of just your rotation, there's a couple of nuances with your damaging abilities that should be noted that you could capitalize on should the situation arise. One of these is that your bomb's AoE will instantly kill all totems in its radius. This includes Spirit Link, Tremor Totem, Grounding Totem, etc. 
Another thing you can do is using Aspect of the Eagle through parry or dodge effects. For instance, you could use it through a warrior's die by the sword, or whilst a demon hunter is flying in the air with raid from above. Now that we can get into the biggest aspect of a survival hunter, which is their playstyle. The main aspects of survival are land and crowd control on enemy healers, kiting well, peeling well, feign death usage, and aspect of the turtle usage. When it comes to land and crowd control on healers, some healers can be easy to crowd control, whereas some will be much harder. This is because some healers can be rooted and stuck in it, whereas other healers can get out of them easily. Nearly all of the time, you want to make sure you don't trap if the healer uses the defensive cooldown, as you will probably not have the pressure to take them down during this defensive. There will be a lot of mind games between you and the healer, which can happen in two different ways. One way is instantly trap when you harpoon, hoping they aren't fast enough to react, and you land the trap without any defensives preemptively used. The second way is to harpoon on them and wait for a cooldown to be used, depending on the class they are, then wait out the defensive cooldown and get the trap later. Shamans are the easiest healers to crowd control as you can just stand on them and wait for a grounding totem, kill it, then trap them afterwards. Be careful not to trap into earthen wool or vitality conduit though as this will deter your pressure and make your offensive setups less deadly. Baiting out these defensive cooldowns will make it troublesome for their partners later on, and generally will make it easier for you to land kills as long as you try not to go through them. This priest will want to use pain suppression, premonition, or barrier for the trap preemptively. Sometimes you should trap without the stun first, even during harpoon, so that it's much more difficult for them to pain suppression before the trap, as during stuns, they will most likely use pain suppression before the trap hits. You want to deal with this the same way, using harpoon to try and bait out defensives out. That way you can trap with more ease afterwards, preventing the premonition from being able to break your trap. It's important to note that most disciplined priests don't play premonition in threes, so you can usually trap them freely, but still bear in mind the two defensive corners they could use before trap. Holy Paladins have freedom to get out of harpoon roots, so make sure you don't harpoon them during a freedom, as that can make them avoid your trap easily. They could try to pre-sacrifice or pre-bop your trap as well, so watch out for those defensive cooldowns too. Since those are big defensive cooldowns, if they don't have access to them or freedom, you can land a trap quite easily. Then pursue your kill target to force other defensives, or to simply take them down. Mistweavers can be stuck in Tracker's Net unless they play Tiger's Lust in order to deal with it, or they could just simply be stuck. They could try to pre-port the trap or pre-cocoon it. Trapping Mistweaver is the hardest mind game against good ones, so try to adjust to their playstyle. To make your life easier, you can track their port and cocoon cooldowns so that you are aware of them porting away from traps or trying to pre-cocoon an offensive go, as a pre-cocoon will always make them live. Baiting out a cocoon will give you a kill window until it's back up, making it excellent to do so if you can. Rest of Druids can be slippery as you need to pre-aim your traps slightly as they can shapeshift your harpoon and want to try and run out of your trap. Against good Druids, getting pre-iron barked is sometimes unavoidable, so you can try to race them down, since trapping without harpoon will be incredibly difficult. You could also swap target instead, which is especially powerful in twos, going on the target without iron bark to keep up maximum pressure. Bear in mind, the enemy DPS can sometimes help their healers avoid trap, so there are a few things you need to be careful of. The main cooldowns you want to be careful of are war ban and ground totem, which you deal with the same way as you deal with the other healer defensive cooldowns. Trying to bait them out, then trapping them afterwards. Other cooldowns that are more difficult to deal with though are the reverse magic from demon hunters as well as singe magic from the imp dispel from warlocks. To deal with reverse magic, you could crowd control them outside of reverse magic range. For instance, you can use binding shot on them whilst they're far away from the healer and trap the healer at the same time. As for singe magic, you could simply kill the pet with Reaping Flames to get the huge damage buff from the rank 3 version of Reaping Flames. It's good to burst kill the pets for the ghosts and have a big Reaping hit during your setups, making it more likely to take down the Warlock. You could also try to cover the traps with magic debuffs from your partners, such as Entangling Roots, or Law and Order, or even an Infinite Stars could cover it as well, which can make it less likely your traps get dispelled from the Imp. Landing this crowd control, followed up or initiated with crowd control from your teammates, will most likely lead to kills or defensive cooldowns from the enemy team in order to survive your offensive setups, provided the healers don't make preemptive plays. We can see an example of this where the enemy priest gets feared, although he does pre-barrier the setup at the same time, which usually would be a strong answer.
This gets followed up with a trap from Fasil in order to continue pressuring the mage and the priest having no out due to being relentless. The barrier is doing good work, but the jungle cleave has more follow up crowd control, using a bash on the priest as the barrier fades away. During this bash, the jungle deals a ton of damage, being able to slaughter the mage due to great crowd control and burst damage at the end. When it comes to kiting well, one major ability that gets overseen, even by the best hunters, is their wing clip ability. Wing clip can be very powerful in order to kite people. It costs a lot of focus, but it's an undispellable snare, being worth to snare when sensing danger, as it can be the difference between kiting well, living with relative ease, or having to end up using a strong defensive cooldown as you couldn't get away from the pressure. Another ability that is at the pinnacle of kiting melee well is your disengage. Using this well can be the difference between kiting a melee or being crushed by one. You want to use it to get out of trouble or after they commit a mobility cooldown so you can kite them with ease. Here's another example where Fasil is going for a kill attempt on the Windwalker, but is also taking damage from Fists of Fury. He disengages away from the Fists, allowing him to stay aggressive and close out the game, which could have easily been his demise if he tanked the Fists of Fury damage. You can also use it to get out of trouble from enemy cooldowns or to retreat behind a pillar in order to stop taking too much damage. This also shows the effect you can have when kiting ranged classes as well. You want to disrupt casters as well as line of sight the pressure when unable to stop the casters from getting the pressure they want. If you're not the target, then you will need to peel well for your teammates when they're in trouble as well. Survival hunters have a lot of tools to deal with many classes. You can harpoon them into a follow-up tracker's net, as your harpoon doesn't share diminishing returns with any other root effect, making it powerful to keep them in place and allow your partners to kite them. Even though Tracker's Net is mostly used on healers, you can root melee during high pressure scenarios in order to deny them pressure, to save defensive cooldowns, or help your teammates live. You want to make sure there aren't any dots up if you want to Tracker's Net them, as they will instantly break if so. Keeping them in the Tracker's Net will prevent them from doing CC or damage, as they have 80% reduced chance to hit their abilities. Against Rogues and Pharaohs specifically, you want to be playing with Mending Bandage too, in order to get rid of their bleeds and poison effects, which can drastically help keep your team alive during their aggression. Against Rogues, if they kidney shot your partner, then you want to bandage them during this to get rid of the internal bleeding and their other docks as quickly as possible. If the Rogue kidney shots you, then you want to bandage yourself as soon as possible, again to reduce their pressure as quickly as you can. The reason why Feign Death is incredibly powerful is due to survival tactics, allowing you to avoid big damage when timed well. You can use it to avoid Chaos Bolts, Greater Pyroblasts, and you can even immune Touch of Death just as it fades. You can also use it to completely cancel the cast as well, taking no damage at all, negating their pressure that could otherwise be deadly. That being said though, Feign Death is mainly used to avoid getting crowd controlled when going for a trap on a healer. This is great against mages or warlocks to prevent fears or sheeps on you when wanting to land CC at the right time. In rare cases, you could even feign death in troublesome moments if you're about to die. So you can pre-feign death a stun if you think you can die or when you're at very low health, making the enemy think you're dead when you can sometimes live. In more basic situations though, against classes such as Warlocks, Shadow Priests and Ellie Shamans, you could simply feign death to dispel the dots on yourself, removing a chunk of their pressure. When against Shadow Priests, Ideally, you want to try and fade death behind pillars so that you, they can't reapply dots as easily. You also want to be careful to fade death when looking for crowd control as doing so with Vampiric Touch-Up will disorient you, making you unable to get the follow-up CC in this case. Last but not least, Aspect of the Turtle is an incredible defensive cooldown, but at 3 minutes, you want to try and conserve it as much as possible. Survival Hunters are squishy by design so being unable to have this when needed can make you vulnerable for quite a long time. As such, playing around trying to hold onto it will make you kite and play defensively better, allowing you to live with more ease throughout an arena match. That's everything on the Survival Hunter 8.3 guide. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.